G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today we're going to do another Banggood review, and this time we're going to look at a caliper. And here we have a caliper. But no, this is not the caliper we're going to look at. This is just a, a lead up to the caliper we're going to look at. And starting off this review, I'll just go over the basics of calipers first because we would not want anybody to get confused and uh, potentially wander off into a high level forum and get torn to pieces by the, uh, the lunchtime legends who take great delight in sticking it into newbies when they go into those forums when they make a fundamental mistake. So we'll go through the basic caliper configurations before we start. So, okay, this is your basic caliper. You can do inside and outside, and this is used together with a ruler. So you would use this. This is the old style, basic, original caliper. So that was what came along first. Then they, uh, they went up market and they went for something which didn't require a separate ruler to read off the measurements. So they invented the vernier caliper. And it's called a vernier caliper because it has a vernier scale on the face that you use to find measurements. So it's a, it's a caliper with a, a ruler built into it rather than having a separate ruler with the old original setup. And to make it super accurate, they put a, a vernier scale on it as well. They include a vernier scale. So that's why it's called a vernier caliper. Okay? And that is the only time you'll see the word vernier and caliper go together. Vernier caliper. Then somebody thought, well, why don't we combine a, a dial indicator with a caliper and we can do fine readings with this? So you've got a ruler on the base, the same as the, the vernier, but instead of having a vernier for the fine measurements, we have a, a dial indicator. I can remember when these came out, this is Mitchell Toyo, a good brand, I can remember when these came out in the sort of around the 60s, they sort of really started to be affordable and, you know, I remember my old man being blown away that, you know, he was something that could read a thousandth of an inch, you know, a thousandth of an inch, I mean, okay, a vernier can do that, but I mean, it takes time to read a vernier, it's, you know, it's not as quick to read as one of these things, and yeah, at the time in the early 60s, this was rocket science basically this is like unbelievable and if you had one of these you were you were really made okay but then things kept moving on and then the age of digital readouts came along and all of a sudden you didn't need an analog scale you could do it digitally and these were cheap these were quite affordable well they weren't as cheap when they came out as they are now. I mean, I paid about $30 for this about huh, over 30 years ago when these first came out. And it's actually quite a good looking, quite a good unit. And even though these all look the same, you see million, you know, zillions of these things sold that look just like this one. They're actually not all the same because uh, they have different quality control, different circuitry. Uh, this has got a low battery indicator in it. And it will uh, uh, hit the zero button. Okay, it's got a low battery indicator in it so that not like, a, not like some of them, these cheap ones, they'll just run the battery low and you will get um, corrupted readings, incorrect readings as the battery gets below its baseline, its operating baseline. This actually will flash the display. So this is a uh, high tech, this one. It's actually been quite a good unit and uh, never given any trouble, always pretty accurate. So, you know, digital, of course, the big thing with digital that you've got is quick, instant readout. Even if your eyesight's lousy, you can still read them generally. And you've got the bonus, you can switch between imperial and metric. Great thing. So you can easily do conversions. You can also set your zero point anywhere on the, on the beam and uh, you can do pluses and minuses very easily. They're good. 
And I don't think there'd be too many people who don't actually use digital these days. I could be wrong. I mean, I still like a vernier. And uh, at the end of the day, there's no batteries to go flat in a vernier. But anyway, that, that's what we've got. So how's, you know, what's this got to do with the review? Well, the fact of the matter is we've now moved on to another level. Uh, the next generation of digital, I suppose you could say, and yeah, you can get them quite cheaply now. What's the next generation of digital? Well, it doesn't just do metric or imperial, it now does fractions. So for less than $20, you can now buy Australian, you can now buy a digital caliper that will read fractions as well. Okay, if you're not going to be using Imperial, if you're not working on Imperial, fractions are probably a bit uh, a bit meaningless. But if you are still, you know, wandering around in Imperial land, which I do, uh, yeah, fractions could be could be good. Could be good for sizing drills, sizing stock. I've yet to try this and see how good it really is. But it's another feature you get for the same sort of money as you as you're paying for this. So what? got me on this uh, review thing. Why would I want to review a $20 digital caliper when, you know, it's got fractions, but, you know, big deal. Either one or you don't. Uh, well, uh, I was watching a video on Retro st uh, Steam Tech. Retro Steam Tech, got to say that. And Alan uh, put up a video showing a digital caliper he'd bought from Bangwood, which has had the fraction capability included and I hadn't seen that before and I thought well that's pretty cool and uh, they seem to be sort of you know really coming to the, to the front now so I thought okay and Alan said you know he thought it was a good piece of kit he hadn't paid a lot for it and he said you know you ought to review this Rob and I said to Alan yeah you know, I'll see what I can do. It looks interesting, and certainly, what's even more interesting is it's a huge seller. I mean, they've they've got this is just the reviews, and just the reviews. There's over fifteen hundred reviews being done on this. You know, text reviews, and of those, uh, about 90, 95 percent are positive. So I mean, you know, five stars. So that's a pretty good indication that. It may not be too bad for the money, and as I said, yeah, under 20 bucks delivered Australian. So that's what we'll look at, and uh, this one's for you, Alan, and anybody else who might be interested to see what the Banggood offering is like. So here's some screen grabs of it. We'll look at those, and then we'll move on. So here it is, it comes in a black plastic case like they all do, similar sort of cases, it's uh, what you'd expect, open her up, oh what have we got, we've got technical specifications in English. And battery replacement. Oh, a flashing display indicates low battery. Very good, very good. So we, we know it's got a low battery warning. That's exactly what you want. Okay. Bit of silica gel, get rid of that. Do not, do not eat wise decision. Mm, it's quite weighty. Yes. Seems quite solid. We'll get the case out of the way. So oh, it's in a sealed bag and I'll have to open this up. Uh, 
Well, the pointy bit comes in handy. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's quite a a weighty little unit. When we compare it to compare it to my old one. It's actually slightly heavier. Yeah, interesting. Reminds me reminds me a lot of my eye gauging one. So that's the eye gauging, which is fairly expensive. These are really good. They're the next probably step down from Mitsu Toyo. They're very, very good, very very good quality unit. Yeah. I gave things slightly heavier again. So does it turn on? Oh, look at that, it's got a battery in it. Very good. Mm, display is nice to read. Yes. Millimeters, inches, fractions. Yeah, I like the, the display. It's very good. In size, it's yeah, a bit smaller than the other one, but it's very clear. So that's got bigger numerals. But these are very clear, I must say. Similar. Great. I really like the display. That's that's good. Really excellent. Okay, so what is it really? Well, it's described as a Danny U 150mm stainless steel LCD screen display digital caliper. Six inch fraction millimetre inch. Dead right. It's also described as high precision stainless steel LCD vernier caliper. caliper. Wrong. It's not. It's not a vernier caliper because it hasn't got a vernier scale. So, But once again, um, Banggood have just fallen into the same trap as a lot of other sellers. And if you do a search on steel digital LCD vernier caliper or, you know, LCD vernier, vernier caliper you come up with a lot of hits from all over the world, hundreds. And some of those hits are going to be from engineering firms or firms selling engineering equipment who should, should know a lot better than to describe them as the digital vernier calipers. They are not and never will be a digital vernier caliper. So that's just sales jargon, spin, that for some reason just seems to be out there these days and uh, people fall into the trap. So yeah, if your local uh, engineering supply company can't get it right, well what hopes anybody else got? And it makes you wonder whether they really know uh, what their products are that they're selling, you know. And from my, <laughs> from my experience, I think some, some of those guys, no offence, uh, were probably selling toasters uh, the week earlier, but uh, also, you get some really good guys who really know their stuff and they know that this is not a digital vernier caliper. It's just a digital caliper. End of story. Okay, let's move on. On the old one, it's got instant on. And the new one has got the same, instant on. So... You know, I'd say electrically, electronically, they're probably very similar. They both take the same battery. They take a an LR44, which looks like this. Uh, the eye gauging that I showed you earlier takes a CR2032, which is a larger battery, a longer-lasting battery, but you know, uh, 
these are quite okay providing you use fresh batteries and uh, I don't have any issues there. Let's turn it off. Let's see how. Oh, yeah. That's uh, quite well made. Some of them can be a bit flimsy on the cheapies, but that's snug fitting, very smooth. It's good. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to get lost in a hurry, I don't think. Okay, what else? If we look at these digital calipers, you'll find that they all basically have the same uh, resolution, uh, 0.01 millimetre, and they have the same accuracy level, 0.02 millimetre. So, in theory, using them should give similar results. So what we'll do is we'll test these against some test blocks I've got and we'll we'll see how they come up. But first I'll have a close look at this and just see what the quality looks like. Fit and finish is pretty good on this. There's not too much wrong with it. Uh, rough edges are well pretty good. There's a little bit of roughness there, just a tiny bit. Everything else is, is good, the finish is good. You hold the jaws up to the light and you don't see any light getting through, so that's a good sign. Repeatability. Not bad, pretty good actually. But of course, it's got a stiffer, coarser feel than the eye gauging. Eye gauging is in comparison, butter smooth, and that's the difference. That's what you pay for when you pay the extra. You get a a smoother quality unit compared to a more basic uh, finish on the cheapies. But you can't, you know, you can't expect anything else, and this will do the job. But it's just that it doesn't feel as nice, and I'm, I'm not, you know, knocking it by saying this, but it's a fact that they just feel a bit different. The repeatability is slightly less on this. It will throw in occasionally a variation, but overall, it's good. I mean, it's as good as you could hope for and expect in this uh, price range of uh, of caliper. I think it's pretty impressive, really. For measuring purposes, we'll compare the the new one to the eye gauging, and we'll, we know this one is very, very accurate. And we'll use a couple of test blocks I've got from my micrometers. First off, we use a a test block from uh, Michu Toyo Micrometer. Now I know this one has actually got um, an a, a fault in it. It's not actually 100% accurate because if we measure it, 25 .01, 25.01, 25.02, 25.01, 25.02, 25.02. 25 it's supposed to be 25 mil, but it's actually slightly bigger. And uh, yeah, that's how it came out of the factory. Let's try it with this one. Twenty-five point zero one, twenty-five point zero two. So there's a slight difference there. I've got my old one, and we can see what that shows. Twenty-five point zero zero. So 
So that's slightly different again. 25.00. So that's less accurate. Measuring it with my digital micrometer shows at 25.015. So it's between 0 0.015, 0 0.02, you know, so either of those readings uh, are within spec when you look at the actual accuracy level of it. So, uh, yeah, that's okay. Now we've got a longer test piece from one of my old micrometers, 50.81, that's imperial, but uh, we're measuring it in millimetres. The eye gauging makes it at 50.80. The old micrometer, which has done a lot of work, makes it at 50.79. So once again, it's within spec. You know, once again, the accuracy is 0 0.02. So that's quite acceptable. Any of those would do the job quite nicely. So yeah, quite acceptable and certainly not a lot between any of them. As far as the digital readouts go, they're all equally easy to read. This has got the biggest digits. I think they're slightly bigger than these. This has the larger digit um, characters for the decimal points. This one is consistent in you know, size as well, but smaller. This one has the smaller decimal point digits, but I don't find that hard to read at all. In fact, all, any of them are easy to read if your eyesight's half decent and uh, that gives a bit of class to it, I think. It looks quite cool with the, the smaller digits. OK, let's check out that fraction feature on this that these other two don't have and see what it's like. So let's try the, the fraction feature and see what we've got. I don't know what diameter this is. We'll try it and see. It'll be imperial. So it says it's a quarter. So if you want to get a drill and you're not sure which one it is, you know, you can just pick out one that looks like it would be a quarter, even if it's marked and the, the markings are worn off. We'll measure it. Bingo, a quarter, how good is that? So straight away, it just saves so much time. It's a really good feature, I like that. See if we can find another one here. What's this one? A quarter as well. So once again, just pick up a quarter like that. We'll try another one. What's this? Three eight. Three eight. Easy as that. So that's a really good handy feature, particularly if you're sifting through drills. I think that's great. That'll save a lot of mucking around and uh, you know it saves trying them in your drill, drill stand or whatever you can just run over the uh, the caliper and uh, and get a reading top stuff i really like that feature that's great the other capability is of course that you can search you through your nuts and bolts look for a bolt you can either set the the size you want and lock it and just, you know, try and see which one is what you want. Or you can actually just measure your bolt. Thirty nine one twenty eight, where you won't have a drill in that size, so you just creep it up to the next in five sixteenths. So you just get a 5 16 drill, you know, if that's the bolt you're using, whether it came out of the tub or whether it's one that you want to use and drill a hole, you know that a 5 16 drill is the closest thing to it. Pretty cool, eh? So even if you work in metric uh, and you've got an imperial drill set, you can use this feature, just measure your metric bolt, and get your closest drill. So it's a very good feature. I can see where in the future all of these cheap calipers, all of the calipers will actually have the fraction 
uh, function because it is just so useful and it would cost them nothing to include it. So yeah, you know, Alan was right. This is a top little bit of kit and uh, yeah, oh, I, I thoroughly recommend it. I think it's great. 20 bucks Australian is, is really cheap. So do you have a favour and get one? I'll put the link to it in the video description and yeah, for the money, I have to give this a full score. It's, it's, it's really, really good and it's really well made and yeah, it's, it's damn accurate. Top stuff, Banggood, you did well here. Okay, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.